Pajamama Dumba De Ma Pajamama Dumba De Ma You who embrace the earth Mother of the universe One love over all Pajamama Welcome to Life Passages, The Soul's Journey. Um, I'm your host, Nancy Bloom, and I want to welcome you to today's show, in which I'm actually not going to be the host from now on. My longtime friend, Shoshana Alexander, is going to interview me about work that I've been doing. So, so the title of our show today is The Universal Medicine Wheel. And enjoy this show with us. Thank you for coming and sharing with me, conversing with me about this. Oh, this is delightful, Nancy, because uh, I've known you in many of your guises for years. So <laughs> to right. have you speak about Medicine Wheel is really an important thing. You've been doing this for a long time. Right, about 20, oh, it's hard to even remember, 24 years, I think. Mm. Mm -hmm. And you know, when we talk about the Medicine Wheel, often people think, Native American, mm -hmm. but I understand that you draw upon many different traditions. Yes, because my understanding is that it really is such a very universal uh, kind of a, a, a wholeness that the medicine wheel, we think of medicine wheel as Native American, as you said, but that very same focus with the four directions and Mother Earth, Father Sky, Great Mystery, or the Holy Spirit, that is held in so many cultures the same, in Africa, in the Celtic world. I found it in Bali when I was in Indonesia, in Peru, which is of course Native American, but of South America. And even within the tribal cultures of North America, there are different ways of holding this wholeness. But the medicine wheel, the sacred circle, that incorporates those directions, Mother Earth, Father Sky, the great mystery that pervades all things, that lives in our core, the, the great within. Um, all of those medicine wheel forms are really ways of holding the essential core essences of our life here on the planet. So all of them honor the four elements, fire, earth, air, water. All of them have a place for all living beings. Um, in them, but just in, sometimes in different formats or different, according to different colors or different ones. So different tribes do it different ways. But there's this understanding that's so ancient, I think. It, it really lives in our DNA, I do believe, because all of our ancestors, if we go back far enough, we all had ancestors that lived very much with the earth. That was their life. They lived with the fire. That was their means of cooking and of, of warmth and of light. They live with the cycles of the moon. And when we think to ourselves what it would be like if we would had no electricity around, what the full moon would be like, how impactful that is. And as I was driving here today, I noticed that the moon is half. It's half light and half dark. It's exactly half today, which I always have a feeling about that, which is maybe half light, half dark, half male, half female. It's a, a kind of moon that I like, because to me it feels like balance. So as we have become people of more of an industrial way, and the information age is here, so often we forget to do things like look at the moon. What's the moon doing? My sense is our embodiment for millions of years, certainly 30,000, 50,000 years, the embodiments that we are in now, we're entrained with these natural cycles. So there's something of a deep core sanity that it brings to just align ourselves with the cycles of the earth, with the cycles of the seasons. And we can think of that as seasons out there, but they reflect and evoke different seasons of our soul, different ways that we are through the year. We feel different in the winter than we do in the summer, for example. So the medicine wheel brings in all of these things that you're talking about. Often people think of the four directions, right. north, south, east, west, like that. So maybe you could tell us what each of these points on the medicine wheel 
is about because good. it's called medicine wheel. Why? Yeah, that's a good question. I, I tend to use that word medicine as it's been translated from different Native American uses. And to me, medicine isn't like, or oh, you're going to take your cough medicine. <laughs> it's not like that. It, it means the kind of healing way of, of something that that uh, impacts you in a beneficial way, not only in your embodiment, but in your spirit. And so these different directions offer us a medicine. They offer us balance. They offer us wholeness. They offer us deepening into parts of ourselves that already are potential within us. And certainly these directions, the four directions, for example, speak to different essences in our natural world. Well, so, so let's start let's at start. one direction. Yeah. Like, where do you start? Well, let's start with the south. We'll pretend this is the medicine wheel. How about that? Here's the south. It's at the bottom. And uh, the south in the medicine wheel format that I kind of allude to or refer to is the place of summer. And summer is the hot, warm time of the year where the fire is closest, the fire of the sun comes closest to us. So in a lot of tribal peoples, they accord the fire to be an element of the South. And the South represents heartfulness, the childlike place, place of coming into uh, embodiment, the child. And in that childlike quality is a kind of coming from heart, less mind, less strategizing, more immediacy of living heartful living, kind of one of the meditations I love to share in the south part of the medicine wheel workshops that I do is a clear mind don't know meditation. We can invite ourselves into clearing our minds out of the way and coming into the pure I don't know state. It doesn't have to be an alarming I don't know. Oh no, I don't know. It's like, oh, I don't know. And we relax into the truth that most often we probably don't know. Our whole Human beings don't know that much. We live in a, a humongous sphere of universes, and what do we know? When we relax into don't know, we just get to be. So, so in your workshop, you, you, would, you would say to people, let's now tune in to the South, first of all? People would... Yes, when, we, when I do the workshop, most often I've done it as nine meetings once a week for three hours. Mm -hmm. So it gives time in between the weeks to journey within the direction that we've entered, to let it continue to impact you. Because when we open to something willingly, it will bring its gifts and magic to us. So for example, uh, the way I start the medicine wheel work is I start in the south at the place of the child. We do a little introduction to the whole wheel and we start in the south. And it's like, it is inviting ourselves to open to the medicine, the, the healing power of fire, which is the element. It's moving into that don't know mind. What happens when we go, okay, clear mind, don't know, I don't know. And uh, we do some work with our inner child, both the wounded child, which so many people have focused on, but also the wonder child, because we still have within us, no matter our hurts and sufferings of the past, we have within us the magical child that we were born as, our essence. And in mm -hmm. fact, in a lot of the teachings about the, er, the uh, South, it's been said that the South is the direction of innocence and trust. Mm -hmm. And I like to say innocence in this way is not speaking of naivete, it's speaking of living in our essence, that being that we first showed up here to be, uncluttered by all this other stuff. So in the South, we get to explore that. And, uh, you know, there, there are more aspects to the South as well, but that gives a feel for it. That's great. Yeah. Then where do we go? Then we go, then the next week, if we're doing a weekly thing, and soon I'll be doing one that's four full days, but the next direction we go to, there's the South, we go here to the West. And the difference between the South and the West is palpable. The South, the colors associated with it often are red and green, very vibrant colors. The West, the color is black. So sometimes what I have liked to do in my workshops is actually wear the colors of the South and then change. Because each time we, you know, we've worked with the South at first, we come back to the next meeting, we debrief on what we did, we do a little more with the South, and then in the middle, the halftime, we switch to the next direction. When I change garments, it's like, wow, it's so different. 
The black is the place of the West in many, many of the tribal cultures. Now, sometimes people have accorded it, tribes have accorded black color to the North, which we can understand, long, dark nights. But in the way I work with it, we're, we just, you know, work with it. With the black as the West, the West is the place of the sunset. So there was fire of noonday in the, in the South, and now it goes into sunset. The sunset of the year is what? It's autumn. And it really, autumn is a very special time. It's a time in our culture where people are like, oh no, summer's over, oh dear, <laughs> winter's coming. But it has its own magic. And so in the fall, the herbalists do not gather leaves for herbs in the fall. Because why? Because all the energy of a plant goes into the roots. All the energy of a tree goes into the roots. So if you're gathering herbs, you want to gather the roots. That's where the energy is. And so it's really an invitation for us, too, to come from the outer deeper. It's a calling deeper. And it's been called the looks within place, introspection place. It's also a place of death and rebirth. It's where the darker things of life show up or, and are honored. One thing I love about the medicine wheel, it, as opposed to a lot of Judeo-Christian understandings, this understanding, which like I said, I think is universal from all of our ancestry, it incorporates an honoring of the dark, not just the light. Yeah. And we can know that even in our darkest times, we're learning from that. That's growing us, deepening us, strengthening us. So in the, in the West, we work with dreams and with that time-honored question, who am I? Who am I really? Not who do I appear to be, what's my role in life? But who am I at my deepest core, that kind of thing? And then how do I move through the challenges of my life? How do I meet those darker things? with grace and dignity and uh, let that ripen me and deepen me, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the journeys of the, of the West. And then we move to the North. Mm -hmm. And the North is the place of, uh, we, we can just think to ourselves, what is the North? It's where it gets snowier, it's colder. Um, and so often in a lot of tribal ways, white is accorded as the color of the north, and it is the season of winter, and it is the time of day of midnight. So it has very special medicines, very distinct from the south and the west. The north, the medicines are stillness. You can just think to yourself, if you've been out on a snowy uh, day or evening or night, new fallen snow, it's very, very still there. And there's a crystalline purity in that atmosphere. Purity is a quality of the North. Also a quality of the North is strength and endurance. Why? What did the people of the original inhabitants, for example, of this continent do in the North? And that winter time, they had to endure. They had to endure hunger. They had to endure cold. So it's a place of strength. It also has the medicine of listening to Creator. The, there's a whole ethos of the wisdom that, that we can uh, apply in our life by listening for the greater wisdom. So it's often been said that the south-north axis mm -hmm. has been called the good red road. It's like we're childlike, we're coming from heart, we are according a kind of alignment with spirit as we walk our earth walk. It's a beautiful way, it is. And so there is a lot of focus with listening. And all things tell us their magic, their messages, their secrets, if we but listen. So even listening to a rock, listening to a stream, what is a message there for me? Maybe it comes in words. Maybe it's a feeling. So um, listening, silence, that strength, being uh, with the medicine of the North, and I forgot to mention the medicine of the West also, I'll say something about that in a moment, but the element of the North, I should say, is the Earth. So being with the power of Earth, or putting yourself on a boulder, or sitting with your back to a boulder, maybe there's stream going on around you, but if you're on that boulder and you feel the boulderness of boulder, you realize there's a core strength you can tap into. The natural world that we tap into through this kind of a focus gifts us with a lot of states of being that we can open to in our own nature. 
So the, I forgot to say that the medicine uh, element of the West is water. Mm -hmm. Is you know the water is deep. It's changing. It's you know moving, and so in this recent, I'm, I'm teaching a medicine wheel series right now, and we had spent quite a bit of time with the water, going to certain very sacred feeling places by the waters to let ourselves be impacted by that. Being by the boulder, on the boulder, feeling the water go by, how do we stay strong even as our whole world is shifting? Or, or how do we then align with the flow to be able to flow in our lives? We're learning all the time from these things. Then we move over here to the east. From the north. I want to fix you. Oh, yes, Nancy. fix things. That's good. Yeah, just Let's so we just can make sure to hear things. you. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> yeah. So the east. Yes, the east is the direction of uh, sunrise. It is spring, which is fresh new life. Creativity is accorded to the east as a power of it. And we can just see that in the earth. Everything is, wow, it's all being created around us. We can feel that incredible power of things coming alive in the East. Sunrise is an amazing time of blessing to open to that sun rising, which was very traditional and still is for a lot of peoples all over the earth, to just open and receive that light of the sun that begins that day. I heard a very interesting thing on the radio that I loved by a woman who's an author and grew up around prairie dogs, thousands of prairie dogs. She said, that every morning at sunrise, they all face the sun and they, they have their hands like this for like a half hour. Not only that, at the west time of sunset, they do it again. Mm -hmm. So they, those are two very beautiful, powerful times. So in general, this work with the medicine wheel is a way of opening these doorways to our alignment with and our receiving from the gifts of the natural world. So the east, is the place of illumination. It's a place of enlightenment. And I like to say we're already enlightened. That is our nature. It's all about just an unveiling. So how can we unveil and open to that? The totem animal of the East is the eagle. And often we take a journey as and with the eagle in the, in the medicine wheel work to just feel that freedom of flight. The perspective of the East is that eagle sight from very far. Eagles fly at sometimes as high as 30,000 feet, which is where airplanes, their transcontinental go. Wow. And they can see an amazing distance. So when we sometimes can liberate ourselves from this little world, get that eagle eye sight, it gives us this vaster perspective. And yeah. what's the color associated with the east? The color with east is yellow, it's light. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And again, like I said, different tribes do it different ways, but that's a, that's a common one. Well, so... That's four people, directions. Right. People come into the workshop. They learn all these various ways. Yes. And then what? Once <laughs> they know all of these, uh, you think you were talking about the final day. Right. People come in. Mm -hmm. And I did want to say we do focus, unlike a lot of people who just focus on four directions, we focus on Mother Earth as a direction, or often been called Grandmother Earth in the native ways. Grandparents were very revered often as spiritual teachers as well as beloved caregivers. And Grandfather Sky, grounding, vastness, we get those qualities from there. And then the great within direction, we can't forget that. Great mystery that pervades all things and lives at our core. So we do all of those, we do journeys within each. And then the final time, uh, the final meeting time has some very special things in it. We've journeyed in each of these directions. We've gotten to know it intimately in nature and in ourselves. There is a journey that I then lead, which I call dancing the wheel awake in our own beings, which is to stand in the center, the essence of ourself, which is so connected with the presence, the greater presence of great mystery of Holy Spirit. And then to step into each direction in turn, feeling in your body what that experience is. Mm -hmm. So people often close their eyes because it lets them feel more. And they might, we'll start in the south, and I'm drumming and inviting them to go into the south. And they just go into, wow, what the south felt like to them. How juicy it was, how playful, how, how enlivened, embodied they felt, how coming from heart, 
And then the invitation after they explore that is to come back to the center of the essence. Mm -hmm. Then to step into the West. What was that like for them? The depth, the who am I really? Sometimes the suffering, the tears. Uh, there was a, a Native American grandma said, uh, tears water the garden of the heart is what I say. She said, every one of your tears is sacred. Mm -hmm. So even in our sorrows, there are gifts. So they feel, what is that West way? The dark, the black, the, the water for them. Come back to the center, then into the north, et cetera, and around the east, the enlightened self, all of it. So it's a way of owning that because that is one of my senses of why this is a very important understanding to uh, embrace and to, to own within ourselves is that any time then we can draw upon these medicines. We don't have to wait for the springtime to feel that east. We know it well enough that we can call on that energy if we need it. If we're overburdened in the darkness, we can call on that energy of the east of the light to help us balance that. Yeah, can you give us an example of like how has that made a difference in your life perhaps? Yeah. How have you used yeah. this? Um, sometimes we can get caught in the shadow of each direction and that's not good. <laughs> so for example, the childlike wonderful South can have childish aspect if we're in its shadow. Um, we can be naive and, and innocent or we can be frightened as a child. And I had an experience at one point being out in nature and um, some very threatening things began to happen uh, with people around me. Not people I knew, but people out there. And I was very frightened. They had guns, etc. I wasn't expecting it. And so at first for an hour or two, I was cowering behind a big boulder, very scared and very disempowered feeling. Frightened, I would go between the disempowered shadow of the south at that moment, frightened to the west, which is, you know, looking at the dark, and all I was seeing was doom and gloom. You know, there's no good's going to come of this, I'm going to die out here. <laughs> but after a big spell of doing all that, I suddenly realized, wait a minute, I've got to get to a direction where I've got some help. This is not helping me. So I called on the wisdom powers of the north, the guidance that comes from listening to spirit that is part of the way of the north. And I heard very clearly in my inner ear, you're in the right place, you're behind a huge boulder, there's nothing you can do about those people out there. They're doing their thing with their guns, whatever. You're in a good place, it's not gonna help you to be, oh my God, what's gonna happen? It's just not gonna help you, so just stop all that, be where you are. And it gave me the calm I needed and then I got to reown my day. That gun thing went on for quite a few hours, but it no longer um, kind of threw me off in that way. So that's one example. Mm. We can call upon a direction. It's a way to understand capacities that we have inherent within us and that live in our world. We don't have to always go, oh, they're out there. I have to wait for that other season to get in touch with that. We can get in touch with it. And so it's strengthening. And particularly useful, I feel, for a time like this where things are changing, there are challenges afoot. People need ways to hold on to things that are grounding and centering and give that ability to endure and to stay in alignment with our deeper selves, our true selves, through all the changes. So it's useful. Well, and it's returning to something that is real. That's right. Simple. <laughs> That's right. Right there before us. Right. And we might think as far as tapping into nature, oh, if we're, if we're in the city, what can we do? But nature's all around us. An ocean of fast wolf, an Apache Mohawk servant of the medicine, she used to say, you know, you all put down cement. Oh, that horrible cement, it's so man-made. She said, it's all made of rock. It's made of the earth, mother. Come on. When you're on cement, you're connected with the earth. And good to remember. And then if you're you know, in the city between skyscrapers, you can look up and see the sky. That's a natural thing that is there for us. And plants here and there. And we ourselves are nature. We forget to mm -hmm. honor ourselves as very much a part of nature. We have our own human nature. Our embodiments are of nature. So it's not like, oh, I have to look to find nature. Well, it's right here. <laughs> So how has it changed the lives of people who have come to these workshops? People have said that they find this life 
changing. And uh, two of my former participants, both of whom took the Medicine Wheel Workshop in 1994, each separately from each other, invited me to do it this spring and summer. So I'm doing one of the workshops now. And the woman who invited me to do it at her home, she was saying that she constantly taps into all of this. What we did in the workshop that she took in 1994, she constantly draws upon it. Mm -hmm. And it strengthens her through her life. She has challenging work and, like most of us, challenges. Mm -hmm. And the other woman as well, she lives now in Klamath Falls. But, and people have told me that they have definitely transmitted some of this magic and empowerment to their children. Mm -hmm. And that it's not only assisted them, but their children. And in fact, I did have one Medicine Wheel Workshop series where at first one little girl came because there was no childcare, and then another boy came. And once they came, they wanted to keep coming. And they were children a five, six-year-old, an eight-year-old, and a nine-year-old. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's pretty, like I said, it's universal. They recognized it right away, and the tasks are the explorations that we do out on the land because in the middle of each meeting there's always solo time on the land to do a particular exploration and the things that they found were truly magical. Well, one little girl found something on the land that was helpful for her in dealing with her dad leaving because of a divorce. I mean that really felt strengthening to her. So we can, it's, it's within all of us to do this kind of thing. Has yeah. it made a difference to you in understanding the directions to have traveled so much? I think so. I've been amazed to see that in Peru and Bali and the Celtic ways that I've been to, uh, places that, uh, that uh, these ways are inherent in. And we're wrapping up, so I'm going to thank you for coming and interviewing me this time. Yes, blessings. It was... And blessings to all of you. Thank you for watching Life Passages. And... Um, be in touch if you'd like to enter into one of these medicine wheel workshops. You can be in touch with me, Nancy Bloom, at www.spiritandbloom.com. That's my website and all the contact info's there. So take care. And Mama Tumpa de Ma, you who embrace the earth, Mother of the universe, one love over all. Pacha Mama.